Okay, so today we're going to look at animations and animators in Ursina. This should be a bit of a quicker one, but I've got more videos coming up soon. The first method of animation we're going to look at is the basic one for animating the texture on a 2D quad, essentially a rectangle. This method handles creating the model for you, so you just need to pass it a GIF. Alternatively, you can pass it an image sequence with the same starting prefix, but with the numbers afterwards counting up. From there, it just gets handled as a sprite. I'll put a link to this if you want to look at it in more detail on the cheat sheet. If you choose to use a GIF, you may need to install the image IO dependency as well with pip install image IO. Now let's say you wanted to create a 3D animation instead. For this, we want to use frame animation 3D. We can set this up by having a series of models, all with the same prefix name, then frame numbers afterwards, counting up, like you can see here. Then we just call the frame animation class and pass it the prefix of those model names. We then have the option to set the FPS, whether the animation loops, and whether it plays automatically or needs to be cooled in order to start. If we try running this, we should see the animation happen. However, our models don't have textures on them. From what I've found, adding textures or setting the attributes of each frame is a bit more challenging, as they are just created as a series of entities, which then get switched between. In order to change this, we need to use the frames attribute to return a list of each entity that makes up our animation. From here, we can just loop through the list, setting the texture for each frame entity as we go. There are some other attributes we can use and some methods we can call, but they're all pretty self-explanatory. So I will put a link to the um, cheat sheet in the description again, if you want to check it out. Finally, we have the animator class. This one is used to chain multiple different animations together based on events such as a key input. It's actually pretty simple to use. So let's go back to our 2D animation and test it out. All we do is call the animator class, but within that we need to pass it a dictionary of animations or even non-animated entities so that only one will be able to display at a time when we choose it to. If you've never used dictionaries before, kind of see them like lists. However, instead of numbers, like 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on, being the identifier for each item, you can use whatever identifier you like with this syntax. If you've ever done any Lua programming, for example, it basically acts in the, the same way as that, just with, with slightly different notation. We can then use the state property to change which animation we want to display. So for example, we can combine it with the key input event to switch when we press our number keys. Okay, that's it for today. A slightly shorter video, but I hope you still found it helpful. For the next one, we have three options shaders, mesh generation, and terrain. So please leave a comment telling me which one you'd like to see. As always, please like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.